podcast. For your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello, hello and welcome to this bonus episode of the Northern Power Women podcast. We said last week that this is our final episode of the Rise Up season, but as we've extended nominations by one week until the 18th of October, we just couldn't resist bringing in another wonderful guest to your ears. I'm your host, Simone Roche, and in this season, we've been talking all about the largest celebration of gender equality in Europe, the Northern Power Women Awards. So if you're listening before the 18th of October, you've still got time to nominate in one of the 11 categories, as well as the Power List and the Future List. Submitting a nomination couldn't be simpler. Just click on the link in the show notes, register an account, and pick the category you'd like to nominate in. And then by choosing to recognise the work these amazing individuals and organisations do will help you continue to spotlight and showcase the array of talent that we have across the north you can store all your nominations in your dashboard come back to them and add more please do keep high-fiving amazing folk out there but now without further ado i am joined by the wonderful jyoti chiba Jyoti joined HSBC over 25 years ago and has undertaken a variety of roles, predominantly customer facing, working in London, Birmingham and Manchester. She said that most of her roles have been those that she has known very little about, but with her eagerness to learn combined with hard work and can do positive attitude, she wants to highlight that no role in banking should be considered beyond anyone. I love that. Her role as Deputy Head of Corporate Banking for Greater Manchester and Lancashire also allows to lead a team of relationship directors and support customers' growth opportunities. I welcome you. Welcome to Thanks. the Northern Power Women podcast. Hi, Simone. People can't see me waving, but I'm waving at Simone. <laughs> be right back. And people do rave at their podcasts. Walking down the street, wherever you listen to your podcast, give us a wave. It's all, it's, <laughs> it's all good. So I want to start with the basics, is, you know, what Northern Power Women Awards is all about role models and who were your role models when you were growing up? Oh, it's difficult because I've got to think back all those years ago. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure it's role models, but I remember being around a lot of strong uh, women that were in uh, in the picture. For example, Thatcher was the, uh, was Prime Minister, a very powerful woman, whether you agree with her politics or not, she was decisive. On the other end of, of culture, you had spy skills as well, female empowerment. I think for me, though, and it's probably quite cliche and a lot of people maybe say it, but for me, it's true. My, my mom was my role model, very much so. Um, came to this country from Africa. I hadn't met my, my dad before she married him and had to start a whole life here, really. But very resourceful, very energetic, very hardworking. And all that she did was underpinned with strong ethics and values. So I think that has stuck with me quite often. Yeah, they say, oh, um, you have to look this up in the mirror before you go to bed and say to stuff have I done a good job or not and have I done the right thing by myself and by my organization I think that for me is really important the values that you live by and the way that you work and how you do your job and how you live actually I love that going to bed every night you look in that mirror you know that because change <coughs> starts with you doesn't it change always yeah. says as Michael Jackson says the man or the woman in the mirror but I don't I'm not sure I've ever recently had a conversation with uh, Margaret Thatcher and the Spice Girls in one conversation <laughs> but <laughs> I think that's total proof that role models are in every single form. Yeah. You know, we always talk about all genders, all levels, all backgrounds. It's really important. And whether to- you like the music or not, whether you like the politics or not, it doesn't matter. There was there were women that were groups of women that were quite prominent and just and I think quite effectual in whatever they did. Yeah, it's that visibility, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, and uh, and strong. That- yeah, everyone is a role model to someone, whether they're wearing leopard skin or big shoulder pads. Yeah. <laughs> so how did these role models, you know, you talked about your mum, affect you uh, in the way that you viewed your career opportunities and your choices? Because there is no one trajectory in a career, I don't think. No, and I, honestly, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I I, I, um, I went on to university and after I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was very difficult to know what career path to follow. I genuinely can't believe after 25 years I've been banking. I mean, gosh, if somebody said to me when I was a 20 something year old, you'd been banking for that long, I wouldn't have believed them. But actually, I've had a fantastic career. And, and, and part of that is because I didn't look at a role and think I can't do it. I just applied and thought, let's give it a go. And sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. I didn't think, I didn't know whether I'd get the the role within the bank. There's a lot of competition for graduate placements at the time, but I did. And a lot of that was down to, I think, the support I had from uh, teachers I had growing up and the activities that I got involved at the university. But still, I think I didn't see a barrier in which 
organizations I applied for. I just didn't see it. It wasn't even, I didn't have that fear, if, that, if that's the case. Actually, when I applied for the, for the job, I was, was successful. I asked for a, a year out, wanted to travel. I wrote a business case and they supported that. So again, I was really appreciative of that. So I, I've, I have a lot to be thankful for, but equally, I'm, I think I'm really aware that I didn't see the barriers. And I don't know whether people do or not. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think sometimes, I always like to think, you know, that obviously there's so many barriers out there for many different situations, but often it's about what you can do. And that's what you did. You, yeah. I love the fact, you know, I wrote my business case and you created your own path because sometimes it's it's easy to follow the crowd or yeah. it's more obvious to follow the crowd. Whereas uh, I'm a big fan of you. You do you, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You do. And I think you have to be you have to just go for things sometimes. And I, I remember going for a job interview internally and it was for a team that, I, that hadn't worked in before and knew nothing about it. I almost talked myself out of the job. And my boss at the time said to me, look, as long as you've got a can-do attitude and you can work hard, nothing's insurmountable. That stayed with me because, you know, look, we're not rocket scientists. What I do isn't, isn't um, requiring any top-class qualifications, but it is down to... Um, the, somebody else said to be the harder you work the luck, luckier you get I do believe in that so I think that strong work ethic that um, prevailed in the family environment that I grew up in and, and does for a lot of people kind of stuck with me to allow me to apply myself and just try and get on I think it's interesting you say you didn't know what you wanted to to be I was I'm pretty much in the same position and I I think um, that ultimately it took me many years to realize but that's why I've set up Northern Power Women because yeah. I wanted my 17 year old self to be overwhelmed with different faces different voices that's why we do the podcast you know di- you know th- the different journeys because it's great to to have those different opportunities or different stories around you that can inform your life but how might your life have been different um if you hadn't have had the inspiration of your mum and um politicians and pop stars do you know I don't think it was overt inspiration as such I think it was just there in the background seeing people that were succeeding and doing amazingly well without them or anybody feeling as though it couldn't be done. I don't know whether that even makes sense, really. But as I said, I don't think it was overt inspiration. It was just the fact that there were people around me that were just doing brilliantly and going for it and made me think that actually the only limitation is me and I don't need to stop myself from doing anything. And the only person that will stop myself is me. So I have to just go for it. I look at myself now in the job that I do. I'm the only female um, engine in a leadership role in corporate banking for our organization in the north and I look around and I think gosh sometimes I feel like a swear peg in a round hole but actually I don't because it's just what I do it shouldn't matter what 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 sex you are what race you are or anything you are it's just a case of doing the best job you can do and being the best person you can be. And, and you've been a supporter of the awards and a judge and a, and a, and a partner, a, you know, as part of um, HSBC. And um, we always say that, you know, the Northern Power Women Awards are not just for one night, you know, but like myself, I think I'm not, I'm not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you take on your own responsibility as a role model? Oh, it's a tricky question. Um, I think that being aware that you probably are a role model, it, I guess it took me a while to think that I was a role model. And then somebody said to me, gosh, I wouldn't apply for that position if I didn't see you doing the job that you did. And that was a turning point for me. And they were a clerical member of staff. They've now gone on to become a manager within 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 the team. I'm delighted for them. And when they said that, I thought, gosh, I have a bit of responsibility here, even though I didn't even think that I had. And it took me a long, long time to think perhaps I did have a position of influence and I think for that I have to use it positively so I'm reaching out more and more I've got a lot of people that I connect with linking with and have time for and try and coach and support but equally I'm still learning and growing and and, and developing so I think the Northern Power Women movement allows those those connections too which is fantastic passing those opportunities on or passing those skills on yep. whether it's by you you know it's the it's the that you just talked about mentoring so it's it's often the informal mentoring that yes. you do whether it be I'd like to say at the coffee machine but it's, it's it's less of that at the moment and more in the you know whether in the zoom world or the, yep. the virtual world I think sometimes it's it's taking that uh, being generous with your time isn't it and passing yep. that on um, yeah and I think you, 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 you the language you use is pay it forward 
I, I've taken that on board. I think it's absolutely true. If you've benefited for something, it's only right and fair. And maybe a duty almost to pay it forward. And how wonderful that you inspired and motivated and enabled, you know, that individual to to take a to leap into a place that they thought they couldn't go in their, their yeah. career. So that's that's amazing, isn't it? It's the stuff like that that you don't think you feel like sometimes it can be a soft term role models when actually it's so important. And, yeah. you know, um, for someone doubting their power um, and their power for good, shall we say, as a role model, what what would you say? You've clearly given us a great example there of, you know, just having that conversation inspired someone to do to do it and to take action but for someone out there who doesn't maybe think they are how would you convince them they are oh god that's you've got some hard questions to me I I, you know (laughs) I think it's definitely what I thought about myself and I guess um why did it take somebody to say that to me for me to realize it what did I lack in myself not to think about I think I remember talking to my boss about something that I'd done and he said that's great Joe that's fantastic I said all right I said really I said it's just my job I should be doing that he said no you should that's not right. Other people around you were beating their chest and telling me how fantastic they are. And I think, to answer to your question, it's, it's about not underestimating your influence and recognizing that actually there, are, there will be people out there. And, you know, as you evolve, you forget, don't you, what your what younger self was like. But there are people out there. You're probably, and I am mentoring somebody outside as part of the Northern Power Network, Women Network, actually. And they're in their 20s. And it's been brilliant and, and and I wish I had the drive and inspiration and energy that they've got and I wish I had someone like me to give them the sort of coaching and guidance of all this years of experience that I have which you look back and you think what have I learned but I've learned heaps and I've made lots and lots of mistakes along the way don't get me wrong but you learn from those as well so I think don't underestimate it and try and be proactive and accessible and reach out I'd say. I love that, you know, be proactive, be accessible, reach out. And that does come with that whole ethos of yeah. pay it forward, be generous with your skills and your time. And and it's as much sometimes about passing on those failures as well and failure with a small F, you know, and because people, sometimes people think, oh gosh, I'm done for, you know, I'm over. But actually that role modeling behavior, being yeah. that visible person who's, you, we, you talked about having a non-working day, you know, and it's important for you to role model that as well. It's really, that's a, a great a great stance to take as a role model and I think that's it you have to live and that for me I I look at the beginning about your values my values have been really really important to me in terms of how how I work and who I am so for me definitely it's all all underpinned by the ethics and values that I think we should all well certainly for me live by 100% and the final question is what makes the north so special oh gosh well I'd say um no, I think without doubt, it would have to be the people. You know, I think um, I was living in London before and then the Midlands before that. And we were looking to move somewhere. And my husband's from, from, from Yorkshire. And he said, let's just move up north, he said, because that's where the best people are. <laughs> and so here we are. We moved up north. I mean, genuinely, salt of the earth, friendly, honest, so much fun. I think for me, having without any family near me, I've got a when I moved up to the north, I made some great connections, some great friendships. Um, so for me, it's definitely true. It's, it, for me, it'd be the people. And the fact that it, everything is so accessible, I think even be- nature spots, parks, reserves, all sorts. There's lots and lots, isn't there, around. So, yeah, I think the landscape and the people. Absolutely. I think we've never appreciated more what's on our doorstep. Yep. City, coast, countryside, you know, it's amazing. A massive, massive thank you to Jody thank you. for sharing why our work is never done and how to keep <laughs> the momentum going uh, to create change across an organisation. Remember, you still have until the 18th of October to get those nominations in. The Northern Power Women Awards is for all sectors, levels, genders, and most definitely not just for one night. Keep telling the amazing stories of people in and from the North who are doing inspiring and purposeful things. We can only do this with your nominations. So now really is the final episode of the Rise Up season. But fear not, we'll be coming to you next Monday, the 18th of October, with our brand new levelling up season. You won't want to miss it. My name is Simone Roche and this is a What Goes On media production. Please do reach out on our socials at Northern Power Women on Twitter and all our other social media. Or drop us a line at podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. 